All right, we back. More City Sports Talk. Shout out to everybody that's a University of Michigan fan. Go Blue. Obviously, we all know this morning we talked about a little bit that John Beeline has moved on to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And who should replace, you know, John Beeline and the University of Michigan? Let me get some other guys that's not a picture off. Um, obviously, Rick Pitino, he's coaching in Greece. He had the whole, uh, you know, illegal ring going on in, um, in Louisville. He would never step foot back on the college college, college campus. White privilege or whatever you want to call it, that's not going to save him. He will never step foot on another college program. It's a wrap for Rick Pitino after that. So let's get that out of there. Brad Stevens, I don't think I don't see Brad Stevens leaving the Boston Celtics. Don't think it's gonna happen. Um, good coach, um, be an ideal fit for the University of Michigan, but I don't see him leaving. Um, I don't see them leaving leaving uh, uh, Boston to come to the University of Michigan unless he just feel like you know the personalities was too much on the Boston Celtics. He got to deal with that again next year. I don't think he'd deal with that. I think Rozier is probably going to be leaving more as Kyrie. So it'll be more it'll be more work, workable for him. Unless Danny Ainge with the heart attack, he can't come back, right? He can't come back and uh, somebody else come running. They they don't want Brad Stevens as a head coach. They don't like the job he done. Then I believe Brad Stevens in play. Kevin Ollie, he had a whole situation in UConn. I think he didn't get a fair shake. I like Kevin Ollie as a head coach, but... Usually, you know, you know, when brothers have some type of that's detrimental on their on a resume, they usually don't get a second chance. But I think Kevin Nally would be a good coach for the University of Michigan. But those are just the honorable mention ones I uh, know of. And, and I don't want the Ben Holland guy from UCLA. He, I thought he was a terrible coach at UCLA. That's one guy I don't like. You know, used to coach at UCLA. Hopefully, I got his name right. But um, other than that, I mean, uh, my first cause would probably be the Jay Wright. Um, I don't think Jay Wright going to leave Villanova. But if he do, I'm not sure Michigan is a big enough uh, basketball school. We just talked about that in another video. A big enough basketball school for Jay Wright to leave Villanova. But they got the pockets. They could pay Jay Wright whatever he wanted. But Jay Wright is one of the first guys I'm calling or trying to get in touch with to get a job. You know, that's currently working for another college basketball team. But I want to get in touch with, with Jay Wright. That's the guy that I like a lot. Um, you know, other than that, I'm not sure. I don't think they'll bring Tommy Amaker back, even though he done a great job wherever he at with Princeton and Harvard. He's done a great job, so I don't see him coming back. I don't see Sasevsky, Beheim. They too old to be moving into another college program, so I don't see that happening. Uh, maybe I'll give a call to John Calipari. He just signed a lifetime deal, so pretty much that's a wrap. But then we have the trends of, of NBA players uh, going on in college. I mean, uh, then the SEC, well, not in the SEC, but down south. Memphis hired Penny Hardaway. Vanderbilt hired Jerry Stackhouse. So you, you got that little thing going on right now. So it's a Michigan trend with the NBA player. And then we start off with Mark Jackson. I think Mark Jackson would be a good fit. I don't know if he want to live in Michigan, but, you know, he looking for stability. And I think college basketball provides the greatest stability. He played at St. John's. Um, he understands the game. I think he understands the college game. I think the recruiting pitcher will be, you know, I catch Coach Steph Curry, and if he can kind of, you know, you know, bring a style to college basketball that can help. He he, a defensive minded head coach, you know, he a grinded out type of guy, and I think he knows enough X's and O's to learn how to break the zone and break down the zone. So I would love Mark Jackson to come to the University of Michigan and coach uh, the Michigan Wolverines. I think that's a good fit for Michigan. I, it may not be the ideal fit, but hey, it's going on with the trend. Penny, Jerry. Mark Jackson, another good uh, good basketball mind. He can't get in the NBA. Oh, Patrick Ewan in Georgetown, he's trying to build something special down there. So, the old, I mean, you going with the trend and trying to find the next special uh, former NBA talent, and I think that's a great pipeline to get kids to, you know, go to college and, and pe be prepared for the NBA through a former NBA player with the G League giving out elite contracts that's north of a quarter million dollars. What better way to learn the NBA, uh, learn the ball game from somebody that played it? Now, Billy Donovan, I think, is high, high, high on the wish list. I think he's top three minimum, really top two. A guy that could be uh, let go from Oklahoma City Thunder could, you know, just be too much of a nice guy to deal with Russell Westbrook. He probably want to coach young men instead of men after dealing with what he was dealing with with OKC. Um, really good college coach, has success in Florida, won back-to-back -back national championships with uh, Joe Kim, Noah, Corey Brewer, Al Horford. He, you know, um, like I said before, really good coach, um, college coach. He probably right there with Brad Stevenson. He probably round out your top three 
Uh, I think Billy Donovan will be the guy that I might call first, the guy that's not in college, coaching the college or not in unemployed in college, uh, employed NBA guy. That's what I would be looking for, I think. Uh, Billy Donovan, uh, unless he got a job that can go back to Florida or he want to stay in the Sunshine State of Florida and tired of the gloominess of Oklahoma City, you know, pun intended, you know, maybe he'd like to come to Michigan and coach the University of Michigan. I think that's how I go. Then I get my top five at the end. But I think Billy Donovan will be a slam par- slam dunk, um, you know, for the University of Michigan. Like I said before, tough grinded out, won championships, you know what it takes to do, can recruit, and um, – I like him a lot. So go to uh, Bruce Pearl. Bruce Pearl, another guy. SEC, he probably never going to be hotter than what he is at Auburn because, you know, Auburn is not a hot bid for basketball. He done a little bit of something with a, a, a little bit of something to make a lot with Auburn. He has success at Tennessee. He, I think he has some illegal things going on in the Tennessee program. Maybe Michigan don't want to really funk away with that. They want to keep the good, clean-cut image that John Beeline kind of built and kind of made people, people forget about the whole Chris Webber violations. And I think Robert Tractor Trailer might have had some violations as well at Michigan, too. They want good, clean-cut guys. So Bruce Pearl probably don't fit that mold, but he can coach. And he can get the best out of kids, man. And he proved to take Auburn to the, almost to the championship if they would have caught that double dribble. And um, like I said before, Bruce Pearl, uh, without the little situation, if they can get past whatever happened at Tennessee, sit down with him, he can assure that won't happen again, then Bruce Pearl is probably one of your top candidates for the job, all right? In my opinion, well, I like Bruce Pearl. I liked him at Tennessee. He had Scotty Hobson and some of them dudes down there. And he finally made it to the Final Four. I almost busted through and probably could have got a championship if they would have caught that double dribble on Virginia. But uh, Virginia was just a team of destiny this year. But uh, Jawan Howard is my favorite candidate. Not saying he the best. My favorite candidate, Jay Williams called. Uh, analyst, former Duke, he called for him to get the job with Michigan. Uh, didn't get the job in L.A. Um, he might be a, a, he a long-time assistant coach, just like Patrick Ewan was and um, you know, I think it'll be a good fit. You know, Patrick Ewan gave up his hoop dreams in the NBA. You know, the coach, um, Big John Thompson, put a word in for him. He got the job at Georgetown. He building it from the ground up. Then again, you continue on the trend of NBA players coming to college, especially the, the NBA players that was blackballed out the NBA. They're hiring guys from overseas that don't know nothing about the game. Uh, like Sacramento, Phoenix had a coach. Terrible. Why not? Holla at Jawan Howard, man. He from University of Michigan, stand-up guy, good, clean-cut guy, uh, representing University of Michigan well throughout his NBA career. I think he was the first guy with a $100 million contract in the NBA, if I memory serves me correctly. And, you know, he know what it means to be a, 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 a Michigan man. He is a Michigan man. They ain't going to have to run him out of town like they did Rich Rodriguez in football, but he a Michigan man. It make 100% uh, sense to bring on Jawan Howard. I'm telling you, Jawan Howard is an absolute slam dunk fit for the University of Michigan. Obviously, he played college ball. He understand ball. He understand the zone and all of that. Technician on the block. I think it'll be a, a big hit to bring a former uh, Fab Five guy back that didn't do anything wrong. Clean cut guy. Um, bring it to Michigan. But, hey, you know, they probably don't think how I think. But if I, if my favorite candidate is Jawan Howard, you know, but to kind of put him in five top, top five without me saying it, um, just, just, just looking at it, it probably goes, uh, Brad Stevens, number one, Billy Donovan, uh, Jay Wright, uh, Bruce Pearl, um, uh, you know, Jawan Howard, Mark Jackson. That's just probably how they going to look at that. Look at that. Look at the coaches with more experience, but I personally think you need to infuse some new blood in there. Uh, Jawan Howard, I think is a slam dunk. A guy that's young, be there for the next 10, 15, 20 years. And I think Juwan Howard or Mark Jackson getting the job could be the poster child for, you know, NBA coaching assistants that have been sitting on the on the bench, not getting their turn for whatever reason it is. Ain't no Rooney rule in the NBA, which it shouldn't be. But it's funny how you got all these other uh, coaches from other ethnic backgrounds in the NBA, guys like David Blatt from overseas, the coach from Phoenix that just got fired from overseas, a uh, guy from Sacramento got fired from overseas. All these different dudes getting jobs in the NBA, but they won't hire former players and players of color. Like they hired those other ones, Mike D'Antoni getting a 15,000 chance. So maybe it could be a new gateway for former NBA players to go to the college route and reach the youth that way. And maybe you can get more youth to stay in college and learn the game from those players and, you know, learn life lessons and get them prepared for the NBA before they even step foot in it rather than go to the G League and ride buses and get elite contracts. But let me know what you guys think. Motor City Sports Talk, y'all know what the business is. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email that a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request. Appreciate everybody for following us on both channels. One time for the one time. We go.